Hey, welcome back. Thank you for taking time and initiative to learn this AZ-900 Azure Fundamentals exam. My name is Sushant Sudish, and I am going to be your instructor for this exam series. So we are at the first module of the whole examination series. The first module is called Explore Microsoft Azure Cloud Concept. Within that, the first lesson is discuss why cloud services. So what is cloud computing? Cloud computing is the delivery of computing services such as server, storage, database, networking, software, analytics, and more. These are all over through the internet that is being called as the cloud. You typically pay only for the cloud services what you use. This help you lower your operating cost and help you run your infrastructure more efficiently and scale as your business needs to change. The company providing these services is referred as a cloud provider. Some example providers are Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services or AWS, and Google Cloud Platform or GCP. The cloud provider is responsible for physical hardware required to execute your work, in addition to keeping it up to date. Every business is unique and has different needs. To meet those needs, cloud computing providers offers a wide range of services. These services include compute power such as Linux server, or like a Windows server, or like a web application. You need certain compute to run your application, or you need storage such as files and databases to keep your data. That is where you look for storage or networking, such as secure connection between your cloud provider and your company. Or it could be analytics, such as visualizing telemetry and performance data. Many of you may be brand new to this cloud concept. You're probably struggling to understand what I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take you through the Azure portal and show you some of the things what you can do within the Azure portal. You access Azure by going into a portal called portal.azure.com. And you will have to use a username and password, which can get in, get you signed into the Azure portal. So this is how an Azure portal looks like. You can, of course, go and make some changes if you don't like the look and feel, like changing a different theme. I like dark theme. If you don't like that, you can, of course, go and change it. You can choose the language displayed on the portal over here. All the notification will be displayed on this notification tab. If you would like to switch between multiple subscription, this is where you would be able to do that. And you can pin a favorite as well. If you would like to provide a feedback or create a ticket, support ticket, you can click on help and support. This takes you to your page where you can raise a support ticket. On the left hand side, this is where you can click on create a resource. This opens up a blade for a search box, or if you want anything from here, you can simply tap on it and create a resource from here. Click on all services to view hundreds of Azure services available within this portal. So I'm gonna click on all services. This is gonna open a high level view on what are all the services available under storage, under web applications, mobile applications, containers, databases, blockchain services, analytics, AI and machine learning, internet of things, etc. So we're gonna go through most of these services throughout this course. And if I go to virtual machines, I can see that I have two virtual machines running. One is named as an Active Directory VM, then there's a virtual desktop VM as well. Both are stopped and deallocated. That means that I stopped this virtual machine. At the same time, I deallocated it. So I'm not gonna pay for any of these services. We will learn these tips and tricks as well along the way. And if I go to my dashboard, I can quickly see, I can quickly see the resources I pinned over here. I can easily click on any of this widget and I can click on customize. Then I have multiple options. I can resize it. I can move these and rearrange the entire dashboard. 
Once I completed it, I can click on done customization and then I can upload a new dashboard or I can create a brand new dashboard as well. That's a quick high level overview on Azure portal. We will come back to this portal several times during this course. So we're going to see some key concepts and benefits of cloud computing now. High availability is the ability to keep services up and running for long periods of time with a very little downtime, depending on the service in question. Scalability is the ability to increase or decrease resources for any given workload. You can add additional resources to service a workload known as scaling out or add additional capabilities to manage an increase in demand to an existing resource known as scaling up. Scalability doesn't have to be done automatically. What about elasticity? Elasticity is the ability to automatically or dynamically increase or decrease resources as needed. Elastic resource match the current needs and resources. A distinction between scalability and elasticity is that elasticity is done automatically. Agility is the ability to react quickly. Cloud services can allocate and deallocate resources quickly. So vast amounts of cloud resources can be provisioned in minutes. So there is no manual intervention in provisioning or deprovisioning services. Fall tolerance, for instance, gives you an ability to remain up and running even in an event of a component or a service no longer functioning. Typically, redundancy is built into cloud services architecture. So if one component fails, a backup component takes place. How about disaster recovery? an ability to recover from an event which has taken down a cloud service. Cloud service disaster recovery can happen very quickly with automation and services being readily available to use. Global reach is an ability to reach audiences around the globe, even though you may not have any infrastructure in that region. What about customer latency capabilities? If customers are experiencing slowness, Cloud services have the ability to deploy resources in data center around the globe, thus addressing customer latency issues. The predictive cost consideration include the ability for users to predict what cost they will inquire for a particular cloud service. And finally, security. Cloud providers offer a broad set of policies, technologies, controls, and expert technology skills that can provide better security than most organizations can otherwise achieve. Let's understand the concept of economics of scale. Economics of scale is the ability to reduce cost and gain efficiency when operating at a larger scale in comparison to operating at a smaller scale. Cloud providers such as Microsoft, Google, and Amazon are large businesses and are able to leverage the benefits of economics of scale and then pass those benefits on to their customers. Another key concept we need to understand is what are the different types of IT funding models? There are mainly two types, CapEx, capital expenditure, or OPEX, operational expenditure. In capital expenditure, this is the spending of money on physical infrastructure upfront and then deducting that expense from your tax bill over time. CapEx is an upfront cost which has a value that reduces over time. Where in OPEX, this is a spending money on services or product now and being billed for them now. You can deduct this expense from your tax bill in the same year. There is no upfront cost. You pay for services or product as you use it. A CapEx computing cost on a typical on-prem data center include things like a server cost, storage cost, networking cost, backup and archive cost, etc. An example of an OPEX cloud computing cost include 
leasing software and customized features. Let's understand the consumption-based model. Cloud service providers operate on a consumption-based model, which means that the end users only pay for the resources that they use. Whatever they use is what they pay for. And that concludes the end of module one. In the next module, we're gonna dive deep into types of cloud models. So thank you for taking time to watch this video. I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.